once again beloved precious children daughters and men of god it's a privilege to once again come to your homes to share a word of testimony with you i've just subtitled this message heaven is real Many of us think probably the Bible is just a book or is just a series of history that has been recorded into it. But I thought the same until I came to a point that I cannot doubt the power and the truth in the Bible. I have an a divine encounter that made me, beyond any reasonable doubt, believe and accept and know that our Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, the Father of God, the Spirit of God, is real. My story started in a very frightening, in a very sad way. But I'm so grateful and so appreciative to God that today I can still sit, talk, smile, play, and share this testimony with you. My encounter with the other side of the world started or happened on the 6th of February 2015. I was driving to a client to go and work on an IT guy and I had a deadly car accident. Somebody hit me on my passenger side and that is all I can remember. My car went into a ditch and I was gone, meaning I was blacked out, meaning I was dead. The ambulance came and had to cut my car, break me to take me out of the car. I was all bloody. There was blood everywhere. I was not part of a human being. I was dead. They took me to the hospital in Sinai, in Baltimore, in Maryland. The doctors did everything they could. And I thank God for the lives of those doctors. And also, at that point, Then I got to know that we are not just flesh. As the Bible says that we are both flesh and blood and we are spirit. I could see my body lying on a bed, almost naked, and one part of me standing fully dressed. I was confused. I could see people all around me. Standing around me, doctors trying to work on me. I go closer to them and talk to them, but nobody can hear me. I'll ask them, what am I doing here? Nobody hears me. Then within a few moments, my beloved wife came to the hospital. I saw her. And I was so joyful. I went to her and I asked her, Honey, why am I here? What is wrong? She could not see me nor hear me. The funny part is that she went through me. I only saw her behind me. And I asked her, I asked myself, am I dead? 
all of a sudden, two personalities came to me. They were all dressed in white garments. One looked like a black guy, and the other, I couldn't see his face. Then they were the only folk who hear me. I asked them, what is wrong with me? Then the one who I could see the face, the black guy told me, Solomon, you are not in the place you used to be. I asked, what do you mean? Is that not my wife over there? He said, yes, that is your wife. But she can't see you. I said, ah, what do you mean she cannot see me, but I can see her? She said, okay, go and talk to her. And I went. I was trying to hold my wife. But she couldn't see me. She was signing some documents. I was telling her that, see that, what is wrong? Why are you signing this document? What is wrong? She could not hear me. She was very confused and she was pregnant at that time. So I went back to those guys who could hear me and asked them that, what is wrong? Am I dead? They all laughed together. And the only thing they asked me is that, have you seen a dead person who is talking? I said, okay, so who is the body lying there and who is me? This is what they told me. They said that thing lying on the bed is a container. And this is you. That is the breath of our father in you. What you are seeing is a cage in which you were. I was more confused than ever. Then they said, okay, Solomon, we have no time. We were sent to bring you somewhere and show you a lot of things. I said, okay. I asked them, will I come back to my wife? They said, yes, you will. They said, will she be able to hear me this time when I come? They laughed and they said, at a point in time, she will. So I went to them. Within a few seconds, we were in a place very beautiful. It was very calm, very peaceful. Everything there was different. I've never seen it before. So I told them, I really asked them, this is not the United States. This is different. The ground is different. The area is, everything here is different. Then this is what the one I never saw the face said. This is the home of those who do the will of our father. So home? I could see people all over there. But I couldn't see anybody I knew. So they told me that they asked them, so do these folk go to work or what? They told me that people here do not labor, but those from where you are labor. Those here, you enjoy the labor you did from where you are. I said, okay. I was trying to enjoy the place. It was it was so peaceful. It's not it's like it's not like anything I've seen before. So I asked them, can I stay here a little longer? The black fellow told me, no, you only come here at a appointed time. Solomon, we need to show you something more. I said, okay. Then they took me to a place. Before we even got there, I could hear crying. I could hear yelling. I could hear tears. I could hear folks screaming. I said, where are we going? He said, don't worry, you will see. 
Then they showed me a whole place, like a whole country, a river which was like a flood and like it, it was like fire. So I asked them, "This is not the sea. The sea is not bloody. Where is this place?" Again, the one I never saw the face said, "Have you heard?" In the book of Revelation, of the lake of fire, that is very with grimstone. I said yes. Then I asked her, I shouted, is this hell? They kept quiet. Tears came down my eyes. And I told them, please, forgive me. I have repented. I will not commit anything, please. I don't want to go to this place. Again, the one I never saw the first told me, Solomon, we are not bringing you here. We are to let you see and testify, therefore, in your world, that the home of our father is real, and the home of the adversary, the enemy of our father, is real. Do not be deceived. Tell them, they should not think there is no reward for everything. There is reward for everything you do in the world you are. And he said, have you heard there is a judgment day? I said, yes. He said, that is when you will account for everything you did. For our Heavenly Father brought you here for a reason. Then he told me, Tell the people where you are that they should not take everything for granted. Because as much as our father wants them home, the enemy wants them home too. So he would have so many ways to get the attention. And what he does it makes you and it makes us become lovers of the world than lovers of the Creator. I said, okay, so ca can we go back? Of course, I was scared. Beloved, what I saw, I will not even wish my worst enemy to even go there. The tears, the yelling, that was even from a distance. The heat, the uncontrollable tears. I was not even close. I was, it was a distance. And I was scared. Beloved, I will so much urge and beg you. Let us all do the will of our Father. For truly, truly, hell is real and heaven is real. And also know that whatever you do on earth is accountable to our Father. The Holy Bible is his instruction and one he has given to us. Just like when you buy a computer, you buy a printer, you buy a cell phone, you get a manual to it, and that is how you use it. It tells you how to use and operate the computer, the cell phone, the printer. The Bible is a guide unto us on how to use our life. It was given to us by the manufacturer, our father. Brothers, from there, they brought me back to the hospital. My body was just like the bedroom. I slept in it. Within a few minutes, they told me before they left that we will bring people, people who do you know will come close to you. 
and explain some of the things to you. Because you don't know us, when we talk, you don't listen. I said, okay. I was shaking ever since I saw that hell. So when I came back, and I was sleeping, Within a few minutes again, I saw somebody I knew. That was my late father. I saw my dad. He was standing by my side. And he said, Kofi, don't worry. Everything will be all right. I said, yes, dad. I was talking to him as if the way you can hear me. In fact, I didn't even know, I really, I don't know that, I've forgotten that he was dead. We're chatting, we're talking. He stood by me for a long time. Then he said, he'll bring someone to say hello to me. Some people want to say hello to me. I said, okay. Then I saw my wife's dead grandparents, both the grandmother and grandfather. They came close to me. In fact, they were all with me. They were all advising me, telling me a lot of things. At some point, I felt at home. They sat with me. They were chatting with me. It was a even with them. Then all of a sudden, they went. And those two persons came again. They hold the scriptures and I ask them a question. I said, why don't you want to tell me your names? They said again, it's for a pointed time. I said, okay. Again, I asked them, what did I do wrong? And why am I here? This is what they told me. They said, what did Jove do wrong? I told them, I don't know. They fooled a scroll, the rival, and pointed me to Jove. I read Jove 1, and he told me that Jove was a good man, an honest one who feared God and eschews evil. So they all turned together in unison and asked him, can somebody who is honest could a fear God go to trials and tribulations? Uh, I said, I don't know. He said, okay. Have you also said, so, heard or read in the book of Psalms that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him through them all? I said, yes, I've heard that. It's so, okay. Job was an honest one, but he went to trials. Because it was a test of his faith. So what, 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 why? It's okay. Let's go ahead. And we kept reading. And we saw that in the scriptures, it was stated that when the children of God were gathered, the devil also came there. And God asked him, where are you coming from? And he said, I've been going to and fro of the earth. Then he said, have you considered my servant, Job? Then the devil said, Is it not because you have found a head around him? That is why he serves you. God said, Okay, I've taken off the head from him. You can do anything you want to do, but do not take his soul. So I asked them, Are you saying that God allowed the devil to test Job? He said, Yes, because our father knows the heart of Job. In fact, he knows everybody's heart. Even you. I said, but why would he let him go through all that he went through? Then he said, did you read the end after his trials? I said, yes. Was he the same person or a better person? So he was better. He, everything he lost, he gave back. It's okay. He says, have you also heard that it's written that for your shame you get a double? I said, yes, our father 
doesn't allow something to, to happen to you if he has nothing for you. As long as you stick with him, as long as you do not deny him, as long as you stay fast to him, you will not be ashamed. I said, okay. What? Okay. I was getting scary now. And I told them, can I go back to bed? The only bed I know was for my body. And at this time, doctors are putting syringes and incisions and, and oxygen marks all over me. And my wife, may God bless her soul, she constantly stood there looking at someone who could not talk, looking at someone who could not, who could not do anything. Hoping and believing one day he will talk. This encounter was for about two weeks. And my pregnant wife had to drive a distance about one and a half hours on a daily basis to come and see me. Those two angels, I told them that I don't want anything to happen to my wife and my children. She said nothing will happen to them. So every day that my wife will come, I will see my wife and the kids. But I cannot talk to them. And when my wife comes, I can't talk to her. I told her she doesn't hear me, but I can hear whatever she says. There's life beyond life. Our body truly is a container. Hence, it is written, do not be scared of the one who can destroy the body, but rather be scared of the one who can destroy both the body and the flesh. And that's our Father, the Creator, our God. The doctor said I could not walk. The doctor, in fact, told my wife that I'll lose my memory. When I, if, if I ever come back. At some point, whatever they were trying to do to me was not working. The night before, I saw my dad again. My dad was a medical doctor when he died. He said to me, he didn't want anything to harm me, so he took some of the syringes out of me. It sounds very ironic, and it sounds very funny, but that was true. They said I could not walk. My eyes could not see. I could not talk. I could not even go to the bathroom. My legs were hung. They had a katika on my manhood. The only time I can go to, I can, when I want to feed, I feed by myself and my wife has to come and take it out. That woman, my wife, just like Mary, is highly favored. Because the angel told me that through you, your family will be blessed. And Solomon, you have blessed your wife. As long as she doesn't let go of the truth. I said, no, she won't let go. They told me something. Which I won't say it here. And from the letter A to Z, everything they told me has and is still happening. I'll come back again tomorrow and tell you about how I started getting back on consciousness, how I started to walk, how I started speaking, how I started driving again, 
how I help my baby, how the enemies try to change what God has done in various attacks and in various forms. But for now, I would like you to know that heaven is real, hell is real, and please do not take God for granted. Do not take the word of God for granted. Do not take your life for granted. The only thing you have is your life. And if you can, and if you will, I'm pleading, serve God with all your hearts, with your all your mind, and with all your soul. For tomorrow does not belong to you. Tonight, please, before you go to sleep, kindly invite the Spirit of God. Ask for mercy, for forgiveness of your sin. For somebody may not come out tomorrow morning, but you will in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay blessed, and as you stick close to God, you will see light at the end of the channel. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.